My name is Jay Bradner. I work at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, where I care for patients with multiple myeloma, an incurable cancer. New drugs to treat this disease are urgently needed. Working with my colleagues at Dana-Farber and here at the Broad Institute, we found something that's not a drug yet, but we believe might lead to one in the near future. Multiple myeloma cells are unusual in that they make massive amounts of protein. They're protein production machines. The cellular process of assembling proteins isn't perfect, and consequently, proteins frequently fold incorrectly. Because multiple myeloma cells make so much protein, under the microscope, you can see misfolded protein as clumps within the cells. In fact, these clumps are so striking, they were once thought to be some sort of cancer-causing organism. Cells have to be able to get rid of these garbage proteins or they die. This observation was driven home by the recent discovery that a new drug targeting the main trash disposal system in the cell works pretty well in patients with multiple myeloma. This drug is called bortezomib, and this disposal system is called the proteasome. The response of patients with myeloma to bortezomib has been encouraging, but unfortunately, only 15% of patients with advanced disease will benefit, and only for a short while and without the possibility of cure. We wondered, how do the cancer cells get around having their garbage disposal system disrupted? We learned from the medical literature that there's an additional backup garbage man in cells called the agrosome. So our theory was a relatively simple one. We figured that in blocking the first garbage man, the proteasome, the second garbage man, the agrosome, becomes much more important to the myeloma cell. Consequently, if we had a drug that blocked the agrosome and we combined it with the existing drug that blocks the proteasome, the result would be catastrophic for the myeloma cell. So the challenge was then to find a drug to knock out the agrosome. How do you do this? Well, there was a very important article written by Dr. Bang Yao at Duke that identified the requirement of a protein called HDAC6 in the formation of the agrosome. HDAC6 is a bit like a garbage truck. It travels along the cell's superhighway called microtubules, picking up garbage along the way, and then deposits it at the agrosome, this depot of discarded, aggregated proteins. Dr. Yao showed that without HDAC6, the proteins can't make it to the agrosome. HDAC6 is a member of a class of proteins, most of which have important jobs in the nucleus of a cell. There are experimental drugs that block many of the HDAC family members, but what we wanted is a drug that would affect only HDAC6. To identify drugs targeting HDAC6, our team first used a process called high-throughput screening. With this approach, scientists compare thousands, even hundreds of thousands of drugs against each other and then look at promising candidates in subsequent detailed experiments. And that's where the machine in this display comes in. You can find out more about how it works by listening to Nikki Tolliday's description of this process, literally peering in on individual cells by the million to see how drugs affect them. In our case, we looked for molecules that blocked HDAC6 in the cytoplasm, leaving alone the other HDACs in the nucleus. Using this approach, Stuart Schreiber and Steve Haggerty, both scientists now here at the Broad, found a molecule that did just that after checking out 7,392 molecules with high-throughput screening. They called this molecule tubicin. Then, working with the very best cancer biologists in the myeloma field, Ken Anderson and his team at the Dana-Farber, we performed a series of crucial experiments. Using cultures of myeloma cells taken from patients, we found that tubicin does indeed block the formation of agrosomes, number one. Number two, when we combined tubicin with bortezomib, the proteasome inhibitor, the cultured cells, just as we'd hoped, choked to death on their own garbage. Well, so, with my doctor hat on, I look at a molecule like tubicin and I say, well, that's a really great story, a great scientific story. But it's unlikely to work as a drug because we'd need to use much higher doses than a patient could tolerate. So we needed to improve on tubicin. Working closely with expert chemists here in the Broad Chemical Biology Program, we synthesized and tested hundreds of variants of the molecule. We compared them head-to-head -head in our high-throughput system, improving on tubicin with each round of experimentation. We've moved on now from having tubicin, sort of a prototype, a version 1.0, to a 2.0, then a 3.0, and now maybe we're on an 8.0. What we've done in the language of the drug industry is to take a hit and turn it into a lead. 
So where do we go from here? The only way to tell if the molecules will be an effective anti-cancer treatment strategy is to do a clinical trial, and that's what we're up to now. It'll be exciting to see the results, whether or not tubicin and its derivatives will work. The idea of finding drugs that attack key mechanisms in a cancer cell will revolutionize the way we fight cancer in the decades ahead.